Hi everyone, it is Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for all the love recently on my winter skincare routine and winter skincare product pick videos. Hope you've enjoyed those. Today I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about a condition that I get asked about all the time on all the social platforms, which is keratosis pilaris. What is keratosis pilaris? We're gonna go over that. We're also gonna go over how to treat it and build a skincare routine for you to treat your keratosis pilaris at home. Let's go. To start off with, what is keratosis pilaris? KP for short. Keratosis pilaris is a harmless skin condition where you have retained plugs of keratin around your hair follicles. Keratin is the protein that makes up the outer layer of your hair, skin, and your nails. These keratin plugs can get caught and retained around your hair follicle, and that forms a bump on all of the places that you have for hair follicles, which is basically everywhere on your body except for your palms and your soles. The bumps can look very different depending on your skin color. Oftentimes they can appear flesh colored, they can be red, they can also be white, looking like acne, and in darker skinned individuals they can even appear brownish to a blackish color. Regardless of how these bumps appear, they can be very annoying because people don't like the way that they look and feel. They often appear on the outer arms or the thighs or the buttock area and it can even occur in children and that typically appears around the face. We know that keratosis pilaris tends to run in families so we think that there is some type of genetic disposition to it. And most children who have it on their face do tend to grow out of it by the time they're in their late adolescence to early 20s. However, a lot of people also develop KP in their teens. Some people think it's due to hormonal changes and that KP can last for a long time all the way into adulthood. We do know that KP overall is very stubborn. Keratosis pilaris can be difficult to treat. We don't really have a cure for it. It's more about maintaining it and making sure that you are constantly tending to it so it doesn't flare up. Because we know that dry skin makes keratosis pilaris much worse, there are some general tips that I wanna share about how to combat that dryness, especially during winter time when we're all suffering with dry flaky skin. First, you wanna make sure that you moisturize, 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 and you wanna do this when you come out of the shower while your skin is still a little bit wet. On damp skin, you wanna step out, pat dry, and then apply your moisturizer, basically head to toe. During winter time, if you have really dry skin, you may want to think about putting a humidifier in your room, especially overnight as you sleep and usually the heater's on. That can really help keep your skin moisturized. You want to take short showers and baths. I would always recommend taking five to 10 minute showers, showers over baths, so you're not just soaking your whole body in water. And you want to use lukewarm water. I know that is so hard in the winter and trust me, I take hot showers too, so I'm guilty of this, but try to take lukewarm showers. The hot water really strips your skin of all of its natural oils and really dries it out, leading it to become more scaly and itchy. You want to use a creamy kind of soap instead of a bar soap. In general, I would opt for creams, ointments over lotions and gels, just because creams and ointments have a thicker consistency. Lotions and gels have a thinner consistency. They don't help you retain water as well. And then we also know that bar soaps can be very drying. I also want to touch on shaving real quick. Some people think that keratosis pilaris looks like razor bumps, and I can totally see why because there's inflammation around the hair follicle there's a little bump there and it can be similar and we also know that keratosis pilaris can get worse if you shave incorrectly or if you shave in a way that irritates the bumps so in order to combat this you really want to practice good shaving techniques you always want to wet the hair beforehand you want to apply a really thick shaving cream or shaving gel and you want to shave in the direction of the hairs don't shave against it that can actually nick the hair at a deeper level beneath the surface of the skin and then when it grows out it can get really inflamed or it can curl in on itself underneath the surface of the skin and cause an inflammatory reaction that way. If you find that shaving really exacerbates your skin problems, makes your KP much worse, you may want to look into laser hair removal. All right, so now that we understand what keratosis pilaris is, let's get into the treatments. Now, first of all, keratosis pilaris is not a harmful condition, so if your KP doesn't bother you, if it's not itching, and if you're just not bothered by the appearance of it, you don't have to treat it. It's not going to cause any type of harm long-term or short-term to your skin. However, if you are bothered by it, there are things that we can do about it. The mainstays of treatment are to look for ingredients that are keratolytics or exfoliants. So keratolytics do exactly
exactly what the name implies. They break up that dead skin and help you shed that away. So they'll take off all those little retained keratin plugs around your hair follicles. Exfoliants do the same thing. They help you to shed that dead skin. So we can use those terms to describe the mainstay of treatment for KP. One category of ingredients to look for are AHAs or BHAs. So alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. These are chemical exfoliants that we often use even in non-KP skin actually. They're very helpful on the face to help you shed your dead skin, help you lighten up your brown spots, increase skin cell turnover, but they're also usable on the body, especially for patients with KP who have extra plugs of skin to get rid of. On a side note, AHAs and BHAs are also helpful for other skin conditions where you have excess skin retained in psoriasis, for example. So you want to look for chemical exfoliants, AHAs, BHAs. These come in the form of lactic acid or glycolic acid for AHAs, salicylic acid for BHAs. Another category of ingredients to look for is urea. So urea is a really great keratolytic. We've already talked about what that means. And no, urea is not derived from urine, even though that's a common misconception that patients have. And urea can often be found in really thick creams or ointments or lotions. It can range in percentage from 2% all the way up to 40%. So you want to know, pick and choose which percentage is good for you. I would say the 40% range, even anything from the 20 to 40% range is best for areas with really thick skin, like your dry cracked heels. I would not be putting that on the face. Lastly, another category of ingredients that you can use for KP are retinoids. And we know that these are vitamin A derivatives that come in the form of creams or ointments or lotions, and they basically help to accelerate and normalize skin cell turnover. We use them on the body for other things like psoriasis, and it can be helpful for keratosis pilaris because of that additional skin that's retained around the hair follicles. In addition to exfoliants and keratolytics like we just talked about, you also want to moisturize Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. That is key in preventing the KP from flaring or coming back. We know that keratosis pilaris gets exacerbated and a lot worse when your skin is dry. That's why we see more KP in children or adults with eczema. And that's also why a lot of people's KP tends to get worse during the winter when your skin is super dry. If you need any help on what to switch your skincare products to during winter, please check out my winter skincare routine videos and I'll link here. So you really want to look for moisturizers with very good hydrating ingredients. You want to look for humectants, emollients, and occlusives. So you want to look for ingredients that help your skin retain moisture. You want to look for occlusives that act as a top coat over your skin that helps to trap in moisture, prevent that water loss, and make sure all of the skincare ingredients underneath are working really well. And then lastly, you want to look for emollients, which basically go in and fill the spaces between all your skin cells so that that can keep your skin barrier nice and strong. Also, if all else fails, if you find that your KP is not improving with any over-the-counter products, or prescription strength products, you can always go see your dermatologist. Some types of keratosis pilaris, depending on the color, may be a good candidate for laser. This is kind of a last resort, like you've tried everything else. And I only say that because laser is an elective procedure. It's expensive. It's usually an out-of-pocket cost. But we do have lasers that specifically target red things in the skin. For example, a pulse dye laser will specifically target red in the form of blood vessels. And so this can potentially be a treatment for keratosis pilaris if yours happens to be red. So we are going to go over all of this right now in a skincare routine. My favorite products for keratosis pilaris fall into a couple of different buckets. We have the cleansers, we have the peel pads, and then we have the moisturizers. Let's start with cleansers. First off, a product that I've recommended countless times to patients is the CeraVe SA Renewing Cleanser. This one is formulated with salicylic acid, but I love that it also contains all these other goodies. It has niacinamide, which helps with texture and it's an antioxidant. It has vitamin D and it has a great blend of ceramides that they boast in all of their lines that helps to act as an emollient and really help to rebuild and repair your skin barrier. This one also has hyaluronic acid 
added a humectant, which helps your skin hold on to and retain water. So even though this cleanser is doing the hard work of scrubbing off the dead skin, it has all these other goodies and all these other great ingredients in it that help to kind of calm down and also repair and moisturize your skin at the same time. Another cleanser that I really like is from First Aid Beauty. This is called the KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub with 10% AHA. This one contains, like I mentioned, an alpha hydroxy acid. This is a blend of glycolic and lactic acids, both AHAs, bisabolol, which is an anti-inflammatory extract from chamomile, and also pumice buffing beads. So this is actually a physical exfoliant too, but it's very, very microscopic finely milled, very small, so it doesn't cause micro tears in your skin. A quick note here about chemical versus physical exfoliants. I've talked a lot about how I prefer chemical exfoliants, and that's mainly for your face because your facial skin is more sensitive, more prone to trauma, etc. But for your body, if you have problems like psoriasis or keratosis pilaris, where you have a lot of dead skin buildup in a medical condition, then by all means, I would say it's fine to use chemical and physical, one or the other, or as I prefer it, a blend of both. They can work in different ways to be very effective at removing the buildup of keratin on your skin. Okay, moving on to the second bucket, which are peel pads. I like peel pads because these are pre-soaked pads. They're usually round pads that are very easy to use, very quick and efficient. You just take one, you wipe it over all the areas that need it, and you can do this a couple times a week after you get out of the shower. The one I really like is from Skin Fix. It's called the Skin Fix AHA BHA Niacinamide exfoliating pads. Now I like that this one is a blend of AHAs and BHAs. There's a 9.9% complex that's made up of glycolic acid and lactic acid. There's also 2% niacinamide, which can help even out the texture of your skin. And this one also contains 2% salicylic acid. So I love that this is just really easy to use. And I even recommend this specific peel pad for my patients who have back knee or chest knee, because it can be really hard to apply lotion all over your back, but it can be easier to kind of get a wipe over those areas. All right, moving into the last bucket of at-home treatments for keratosis pilaris, and this is a big one. It's a big bucket. This is the moisturizer bucket. I'm going to go over things in terms of AHAs, BHA containing products, and then urea containing products. So first, AHA, BHA chemical exfoliant moisturizers. I am a really big fan of the CeraVe SA Renewing Cream. This is specifically formulated for rough and bumpy skin because it contains salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid like we've talked about before and it is more lipid soluble so it penetrates deeper in the pores. That's why it's better for acne. I like that this cream also contains hyaluronic acid and ceramides. While it's sloughing off the dead skin, it also has really nice moisturizing ingredients. Another one that I have talked about before is the Skin Fix AHA BHA Renewing Cream. This also contains 1% lime extract as well as jojoba oil, glycerin, and shea butter. I actually have this cream downstairs in my bathroom and I talked about it before in this video over here. We love it because the texture is very, very thick. Like it's super moisturizing, but it's not sticky. So my husband has been using this every day as his new body moisturizer. Another one that I like and recommend to patients all the time is the Amlactin Daily Moisturizing Lotion. This contains 12% lactic acid and it's just a very hydrating, medium richness type of lotion that's easy to apply all over the body after you come out of the shower. Now, if you're looking for for something a little bit richer, this also comes as another option as the Imlactin Ultra Smoothing Intensely Hydrating Cream. This one is super rich, super thick, and it comes with their special Ultraplex formula, which contains mineral oil, petrolatum, and glycerin. So that is like thick, thick. So I would recommend using that in your most dry areas and maybe not over your whole body because it can be a little sticky. So you want to reserve that one for your elbows, cracked heels, anywhere that is super dry and needs some extra love. All right, now moving into that other category of urea and these will range in percentages. Like I mentioned before, 20 to 40% are the higher percentages. You want to reserve that for the body definitely, whereas less than 20% or less than 10% really, you can safely use that on your face. First is the Cetaphil Daily Smoothing Moisturizer for rough and bumpy skin. This contains 20% urea as well as glycerin, which is a humectant helping you to hold onto and retain water in your skin. I like this one. I've tried it before. It just has a really moisturizing feel to it without being sticky. And so you really feel like your skin is really well hydrated, but it does have that 20% urea. So it's kind of like in that sweet spot between two and 40%. It's not too strong, but it's still effective because it's at 20%. So this you can say 
safely use all over the body and it will give you really nice hydration as well. Next is the Eucerin Roughness Relief Cream. This contains urea and alpha hydroxy acid as well as sunflower oil and ceramides. So you know that this is going to be a very powerful exfoliant because it has both urea and AHA. Couldn't find the exact percentage of urea online, but if you find it, you can leave it in the comments below. And this one is being marketed as very, very rich. So this one is probably going to be too sticky for you to be putting all over your body. So you want to reserve these for just the hot spots, the super dry areas. If it's too sticky for you, it also comes as a lotion. And this one also contains AHA as well as urea and also natural moisturizing factor, which just helps with overall moisturizing and hydration. Overall, I hope that this video was helpful for you to learn about keratosis pilaris, also known as chicken skin or strawberry skin, and that you came away from it with some things you can easily do at home, whether it's tips that you can use in the bathroom or products that you can get. I will link everything down below and also add it all to my shop my shelf. If you have any questions, comment below. And as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I always love getting ideas for new videos from your very comments in these videos. I have a lot coming up for you, so please stay tuned and don't hesitate to reach out to me with topic ideas. Until next time!